Before I get into it, make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Also, if you have any questions, want to know something specific, have any suggestions or feedback, make sure to comment. So the first thing I had to do was remove the minimum amount of material from both sides of the casting and make sure the faces were parallel. This was done using my 50mm face mill which has had the MT3 shank turned down to 3 quarters of an inch to use like a TTS style tool. I bought some aluminium specific inserts from AliExpress shown here. So here is the mill in action. I didn't bother programming this operation and just jogged the mill around manually. I did this at 1750 rpm. The feed per tooth was around 0.06mm and the depth of cut 0.25mm. Once the first side was complete I quickly flipped the part over and repeated the same operation on the opposite side. I paid particular attention to how tight I clamped the part down as I wanted to reduce distortion. The next thing to do was to confirm all of the measurements in the Z-plane. To do this without a height gauge, I made do with my metric 123 blocks and my digital calipers. I wrote down all of the information on a piece of paper and transferred it to the solid model before programming the cam. The next step was to machine a flat surface on the X-plane so I could set up the part with a high degree of repeatability. I used the metric 123 blocks to set the top cylinder base parallel to the table in the x direction. From there I used my 12mm end mill to remove the minimum amount of material to create a flat surface. From there I would take my edge finder and establish the x and y datum. I would place this datum in the centre of the crank bearing bore. Once the datum was established, I was able to set the z-height from the top of the case and machine the bore for this data plate. I did this with the contour and 2D adaptive toolpaths. I crept up on the contour, measuring and changing the stock to leave until I achieved the desired fit. From there, I bored the holes for the crank bearings, the output shaft seal, the gear selector retainer, and the gear shifter shaft seal. Next, I flipped the case, used the 1, 2, 3 block to align the x-axis and checked for parallelism with the dial indicator. It was less than 5 microns, but we all know I'm guessing as my dial indicator doesn't measure to less than 10 microns. Once again, I would use the edge finder to find the centre of the crank bore. Then, using my 12mm roughing end mill to bore all the holes to within 0.5mm. I then swapped to my 8mm end mill and used the bore toolpath creeping up on all of the dimensions and using repeat passes to account for any tool deflection. I then bored the two 10mm dowel holes. I did this all in one setup so as not to have any inaccuracies between the bore centres and the dowel holes. One of the next tasks will be to align the cam chain tensioner spring bore and the z-axis. I will then spot face here 
and drill through. So this here is just a dummy assembly to check everything fits and the transmission shifts. This is done using an old transmission and all of the old bearings. Here you can see I'm testing the transmission, making sure it changes gears by manually rotating the selector drum by hand and turning the input shaft. With a bit of a wiggle, the dowels lined up and the cases mated perfectly. I then mounted the crank and input shaft gears to make sure they had some backlash, and it too was perfect. Take my word for it though, because I measured this with the old calibrated Mark 1 eyeball. As you can see, it is touching just here. I'll just remove this with a die grinder later. And with the shaft, followed by bearing. Followed by gear. Drops in nicely. No discernible backlash, and everything is happy as Larry. And then from there, you have this, meshes in with this here. There you go, it's all home. And then last but not least, we have this cover that will drop on like so and that is all till next time i'll leave you with some still photos comparing the v-twin engine to the original lifen engine